it's all about the Vikings at the moment, Alex. It's time for Know Your Opponent. Know Your Opponent episodes, shows we dive into. Sometimes it's conversations with other content creators or just fans of the team that we got this week, which, of course, as Ann already pointed out, it's the Minnesota Vikings. And sometimes it's all 22 sneak peeks, little film sneak peeks, looking at the all 22 film, looking at this team that we have coming up and seeing what the strengths are, what the weaknesses are what they're doing well, maybe what they're not doing well. And that's what we got coming for you this week is another all 22 film look at these Minnesota Vikings, but not this most recent game against the Green Bay Packers. No, 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 no. The game before this, that kind of leads you into believing that maybe Minnesota's turned a corner with their team. It's an impressive victory against the Los Angeles Chargers in which they win 27 to 20. And some of the key drives in that game and the key moments of that game, including a drive that they go all the way down the field in 16 plays. Yes, they settle for a field goal, but it's a 16 play drive that takes a lot of time off the clock. They get a turnover immediately after that and then turn that into seven points as well and get a 10 point swing in a matter of minutes against the Chargers. Yeah, and we can learn a lot about how they play certain teams and how they play certain matchups and how they're trying to execute against another defense. Um, some people aren't going to understand that, and that's fine. If, if, you're, if you don't want to look ahead, if you want to look at the team that you're going to play, see how the 49ers could execute against them or how they will try to execute against this 49ers defense, probably isn't the episode for you. But if you do like that kind of thing, you like to try to figure it out. So when you watch it you know, on Sunday, you can be like, oh, I, I seen that. You know, that that's something that I, I've heard. I've talked about that. Now they're going to try to do it this way. This is exactly the episode for you. So uh, welcome. Let's buckle in. Let's get excited about this film study and let's break it down. Here it is. Let's get into this thing, Ant, because there's some good stuff that comes out of this game film and not at the start because Game Pass uh, is terrible, as those of you on <laughs> Patreon are very well aware of. Um, not very good there, but you got essentially what is... Uh, two to the top, two to the bottom. They have a fullback there on the left side, kind of playing a little bit of an H-back role. And you're seeing the Chargers there with five down, five on the line. Uh, something the 49ers are very familiar with um, and something that Minnesota is going to be familiar with as well. What they're not going to be as familiar with is what the 49ers defense has been doing against teams that are run heavy, which is still showing that four-man front and just walking that extra safety down to the ball. Yeah, it's going to be interesting how they have to try to stop Dalvin Cook. Um, but you see the action, the, the counter action with the fullback going back against the grain. And Kirk Cousins is looking to get the ball out. And we have a receiver that falls down, and it's an opportunity you know, to make a play. Correct. Um, so, I mean, I think that's Thielen that's, that's running that route. Right? It is Thielen. It's yeah. Thielen on that route, and it's an inside release with an outside break. And it's, it's just an out route. It's just a deep out, essentially, is what it is. Yeah, it's max protect. They're keeping you know everybody else in. Uh, I think Dalvin Cook might release late. Yeah, he does. He releases right here. Yes. Um, but, I mean, everything is completely covered. There's nothing confusing about this concept. And really, the Chargers aren't buying into the run. And if you don't buy into the run, then you're going to be able to sit on those max protect situations. Uh, abso absolutely, Ant. Uh, so notice now, notice that now that it's second and 10 um, and personnel grouping changed. So now they're – look at how the Chargers changed. Now they're in their base 4-3. Correct. They're in their base 4-3. They're not doing anything crazy to get the four down. Um, and so, you know, this is something that, you know, Minnesota has seen at times, but second and 10 or second and five now, because you get the, uh, the nice false start action there. And now you're back to five guys. So yeah. now, you know, it's an obvious run situation back to five guys. Here's a pitch. He's looking to cut back. Everyone's got to squeeze those holes down and they get a holding call. I believe here on this, that was a nice run by Dalvin overall to get yardage because they squeeze this down pretty good. Oh, so does a great job with the arm over and he just sits down in space. Um, and look at the, the wash there in the middle of the field right around the 50-yard line. They took the double team all the way up there to the 50. Um, so, again, something that sometimes has been an issue for the 49ers is not getting worked on these double teams. And you can see them there working from center and left guard or working that up almost all the way a good four yards downfield. You don't yeah. want to see that if you're the 49ers, uh, but you got to be prepared for it. Yeah, and he's giving up more ground than he wants to. He thinks he's moving horizontally, but really he's, he's giving up ground. So, I mean, yeah, the 49ers have been used to this all year. They're used to, you know, breaking double teams. The good thing is his arms is going to be there, you know, on that kind of a play, he'd be there play side. Um, and with the way that he's been able to handle not only double teams, but handle guards one-on-one, -on -one, and they try to go one-on-one -on -one right there, that is a mismatch for the, the Minnesota Vikings. They're not going to be able to do that, which means can they double over the center? That's going to be a big question. Tough, you can't double tough. everywhere. You might be able to double there. <clears throat> Um, but also, without Kirk Cousins being a real threat in the run game, the 49ers can take that defensive end and bring him down the line to go ahead and stop that run. They can absolutely scrape this guy down the line. And now you got twins on essentially both sides. And you have the Chargers who are bringing only four and dropping Bosa out, actually. Well, they brought a blitz. They brought a blitz off the top of the screen. Uh, bottom down of the near screen. The bottom yeah. of the screen. Bottom brought, of the screen. Yeah. And, oh, boy, that was close. 
That was close. Yeah, you'll see it right here. He's coming. They have it all. They have a, a, a running back for him, so they have the numbers. But, I mean, the, the corner just squatted on it. Yep, squatted on, on it. And this is the thing with Kirk Cousins is, you know, you can get him to, you can manipulate his eyes and get him to take chances or take shots, especially if he thinks pressure is coming or he feels he needs to get the ball out on time or get the ball out to somebody in space. He'll get rid of it a little earlier than maybe he should. So now you have trips to the top of the screen. You have a single up here on the bottom with, I believe that's Justin Jefferson. Jefferson, yeah, down here with the yellow cleats. He got into a one-on-one matchup and he won. He did. Um, it's that easy. I mean, he just, he won. And this is, this is an area that I'm worried about the 49ers. Josh Norman against Justin Jefferson. Um, because I think you're going to get a similar thing that happened right here. A nice hold. Because he's, he, he runs good routes and he's able to get open. Corners are going to have to take away Jefferson. I wouldn't even be shocked if the Niners don't bracket Je Jefferson and make uh, Adam Thielen beat you beat one on one. That'd be a good idea. Yeah, that actually would be a, a really, really good idea. I actually like that idea there. Look, uh, at, look at the line now. Six guys yeah. after the <laughs> line of scrimmage. There's a lot. There's a there's a lot there. And you got a great a great individual effort here at the bottom of the screen, but the guy one on one here with their it looks like what looks to be their right guard is not doing a great job. That was a double. He's actually a double. There. It's a double oh again on the nose. Um, they're doubling the nose guy, the guy on the, the one or zero, and they're pushing him off and creating that lane. It's a nice little pass off. See it? Yep. And then, but they reset the line of scrimmage. Dalvin Cook did a good job of reading the hole. That's a nice positive gain. That is something that's very concerning for the 49ers. If they get that run game going, it unlocks their offense. And Dalvin Cook's one of the best at being patient and then exploding when he sees the crease in the, you know, in the, in the line. Almost like you got a lot of familiarity with a Dalvin Cook, and I, I feel like there's a there's an opportunity that maybe he spent a lot of time playing at a school that you're very fond of in Florida State, and that you've watched a lot of Dalvin Cook film. I, I have watched every single Dalvin Cook coll collegiate football game from beginning to end. So yeah, I'm very familiar go. with him. He's one shocking. of my favorite players at Florida State. I'm absolutely stunned by this, Ant. But you are not wrong about him. He's an extremely patient runner and explosive when he needs to be. Perfect example of it here: pressing yep. to the line, the jump cut outside, yep. and not immediately getting to the outside. Right, jump cut, still pressing essentially towards the line of scrimmage and towards his blocker. And now that it's opened up in space. Now he's going to take his outside lane. The problem is, is there's another Florida State guy there waiting for him, Derwin James. Oh, he's pretty talented. Um, very talented, very quick. And this is something you're going to have to get from your 49er safeties. They're going to have to be able to help in, in the run game. Uh, and none of them are as special athletically as Derwin James, but I think both of them can help in this area. Absolutely. I, I agree with you there 100%. Now you got twins essentially on both sides. Again, still five down linemen for the Chargers. considering there's no running backs in the backfield. You would think one of them might drop out, and maybe one of them will drop out in code. No, they're sending five. Interesting. They brought five, and he had time to get rid of the football. True. And he does have pressure in his face, um, but he's able to get this. I think this is the Thielen over the it's middle. It's Jefferson of again, Is right? it Jefferson it's again? Yellow cleats. You're right. Yellow cleats is Jefferson. There you go. Look at that. I mean, that's just a lot of space to be able to give up. Oh, boy. You guys went deep with Thielen. I mean, this is a similar concept to what the 49ers run with Brian Ayuk and Debo Samuel. And, and by the way, uh, just, just for 49ers fans out there, <clears throat> 49ers fans, uh, a lot of people and, talking about a certain Asante Samuel Jr. Mm -hmm. The 49ers show out undrafted because he's locked down. Good. This is, Asante, guy. Th this is Asante Samuel Jr. One-on-one -on -one okay. with Justin Jefferson. Mm -hmm. That's what this is. Okay. Yes, he is a talented corner. But elite wide receivers in this league are going to beat rookie cornerbacks. It's going to happen. Okay, but now, again, 15-yard line, uh, Minnesota. A lot of things to do here, a lot of positive things for them here. And they're going to go right back to the run game. And look at the, the hips around there on your, on your guard there in space. Big hole. I mean, he gets his foot in his, the ground and gets vertical you know, really well. Um, one of the best guys in the league at this. He's built for the outside zone. And this is a nice play over. Absolutely. And they're winning. I mean, they're winning in their blocks, which is concerning for the 49ers. The 49ers are going to have to do it. Um, but notice the way that Derwin James kind of played off. He didn't fly up to the line of scrimmage on that. I think that is a misplay by him. He should have came up and filled, but I think he's worried about him bouncing outside. Um, so I don't know. I think the 49ers might want to play this a little bit different overall. Top of the screen, just inside the team. Yeah, you'll see him come flying up. And look at him. He's so worried about him bouncing outside, but he's got to get more vertical on this. Uh, and that's why he doesn't help make the tackle until he's you know already picked up five or six yards. Not the best thing in the world for the Chargers. Second and five for the Vikings. And you have someone getting beat there really, really hard. 
off the snap count there and on the left side of the line. We'll, we'll get back to it here in a second. <clears throat> I think it might be the left guard. It's the center. That's a hard block to make there, getting across his face. Yeah, I mean, you're not going to be able to win all the battles. It obviously wasn't that terrible of a play. They were able to get positive yards, but... Sure. First and goal now. Great vision. You're going to have to swarm at the point of attack. You're going to mm -hmm. have to try and win at the line of scrimmage. You can't get pushed off your slots. And linebackers, this week, uh, Dre Greenlaw being back into the lineup is, is going to be a huge addition for the 49ers. Having him out there on the football field for the 49ers is going to be key. It's going to be important to be able to, for your linebackers Woo! to fly downhill and, and do that. Defensive line got off the ball in a hurry on that. And it's almost like they understand uh, you know, the importance of not letting them rush the ball in here. for. Well, I, I, I mean, I see the one-on-one -on -one matchup, but I'm a little surprised they don't run the football here. You think maybe they're supposed to, and this is just a choice he's making? It could be because they, I mean, they completely, you know, get after him. He's got one on one on both sides, so he just thought, you know, we can go one on one to Jefferson, but he makes a terrible throw, it doesn't give him the opportunity to even catch the ball. Accurate, a very accurate. Now you got third and goal, Ant. Cross, I discipline. Um, is that a Sante Samuel? Where is this at here? Let me let me right see if there, I can the, get the corner this guy on the outside. Uh, I don't believe that is. I don't believe that that is, but I think they have a flag on this. I think there's a holding call here on the interior from a guard. Let's see. Because this is eye discipline. You got to see someone coming back across the grain and pick him up, and he just doesn't have eye. No, he's so still overall, it's a nice design by Minnesota. I mean, it's kind of what you expect in the goal line situations. True. Did he drop it? No, he caught it, but there's a flag on the play. Okay. They end up getting them for holding on the interior. So good play, good execution. One guy loses, and it costs cost them yardage now you got third and third and goal from the 11 instead right. of the one um but you're right i mean and, but then again this is what dalvin cook does to you right when dalvin cook is running downhill the way he has been like we've seen on this drive it becomes very hard to not respect anytime he's going anywhere in space yeah oh her cousins gave the chargers an opportunity for a turnover uh, especially since i think top of the screen justin jefferson is open not even justin jefferson who is that who is 17? Oh, that's Osborne. Yeah, but he, I don't know. I, he's coming open after the ball's thrown. It's true. It's like the route's taking so long to develop. This is what I mean. Kirk Cousins will, will make mistakes. So if you're the 49ers, finding a way to capitalize on those mistakes and have those opportunities to you know get, get off the field and get off the field with the football, uh, not allow them to get three points, those are huge. Well, even them getting three points. You know, Right now, Jimmy Garoppolo and the 49ers offense converts those into you know touchdowns. True. Um, so if we're going to play seven versus three, you're going to win eventually. Eventually, yes. Eventually, it's going to become too much to overcome. And now you have Mr. Justin Herbert, Ant, making boo-boo airs. Um, decent coverage here, top to bottom from the Vikings. You see the four down. You see the, your uh, two linebackers in the box. They have a nickel package out there to account for the three wide receiver set. And everyone here does a really good job in Minnesota. The inside, the 24 there, I forget who that is, but he gives the outside release there, and Kendricks is dropping back in his into his space here and basically just sits on this route the whole way. It's cover two. Herbert misses it completely. And now you have Tampa a turn. two actually, but yeah, cover two. Not good. Not good for the Vikings. Uh, not good for the chargers. Excuse me, but great for the Vikings. Look at it. Boy, oh boy. Where he's trying to go to the foot with the football is the read, right? You're trying to get that. You're trying to get to that space. Um, the problem is, is it just takes too long to get there. Correct. I and mean, look at the safety. The safety is not even completely buying that over the top. Over the top guy. You're right. Yeah. He, he's really not. And uh, yeah, they just, they're kind of sitting back and mucking up that middle of the field a little bit. And so, you know, sometimes you have to be able to take those shots underneath and take that stuff underneath in space. Um, something that Jimmy has shown he will do. Um, but, you know, if the, you know, the Minnesota Vikings know where the Niners like to live right now. You know that they know where the 49ers have success and where they want to get the football. So if you're the 49ers, you know, if they're going to kind of sit back at times in certain situations, downs and distances, you got yourself positive things. But Minnesota is also going to have to worry about stopping this run game for the 49ers. And that's, a, that's important. Uh, Minnesota there just showed, showed that they'll go four down. 
on the line on first down situations. Yeah. So if they're going to go four down, you can get three wide receiver well, sets and keep them in those four down looks. Yeah, they went four down against the Chargers. They're not going four down against the San Francisco. Or San Francisco's going to roll for another eighteen play drive. I like uh, I like the idea of that. Do you think we can get on the horn with Mike Zimmer and just tell him, hey, you know, nickel package is where it's at. Four down lineman. That's all you need. Yeah. Well, let's let's hope that's what he thinks. <laughs> I, I seriously doubt that. I uh, I would agree with you there. And now they're going to try and take a shot, a little play action look, and oh boy. He got killed there, Ant. He got absolutely killed. Poor Kirk Cousins. Woo, nice inside move. It was. Is that Bosa? Bosa's on top. I agree. Yeah, Bosa is on top. Oh. Oh, boy. Not great offense. No. Um, 49ers, you can take advantage of that. Definitely can with the weapons you have Trips on the bunch, edge. Trying to beat the zone. And game pass glitches, so just one second. But yeah, trips, trips a bunch. Did it in a tight window. Yeah, he did. Person. Having himself a day so far, Ant. Uh, but again, kind of a levels concept all the way around. You have levels on the outside with the the short out, the deeper deeper kind of out corner action. Then you have what is essentially a skinny post with a basically dig coming across the backside. Linebacker's a little bit late to flow. You would think this shouldn't be there. This middle crosser shouldn't be it's, here. Right? It's the guy on the hash. He's he's got to he's got to read what Cousins is doing and flow with Jefferson across as he's going right, and he doesn't. He's just a little slow to get there, and they get a completed pass. It's it's a nice throw by uh, Cousins. Kirk Cousins, absolutely, and tough catch by Justin Jefferson, who's a pretty talented wide receiver. He is. Okay, you have doubles on the top. Um, it looks like you have tri you essentially have a, a trips trips formation at the bottom. Correct. You have three at the bottom. Yeah. Yeah, two two tight ends and looks like a rip. true. That's a hold. They didn't call it. They missed it. The the lineman's literally looking at the official, wondering. The offensive lineman. So you're calling that one. You're calling that one, right? You got me. It's a, I think it's the right guard. Yeah, 74 there. Right there. Oh, 100 percent You're not wrong there. You're not wrong there. It's pretty funny. That is pretty good. That is pretty good. I see Ant's different. He's downfield. Doesn't count. Count downfield. And now more uh, cook being cook. At the edge, you gotta try to squeeze it down a little bit more. You're expecting somebody to come fill in that situation. I don't see a lot of great linebacker and safety filling here from the Chargers. Well, it's because they got so many linemen on the line. They got 6-2 going. They don't have enough guys. So that linebacker had to... He's resp he's worried about this huge gash here, and Cook is just going to sneak He through. is, but what it is, is somebody that's not used to playing a 6-2, to that the guy that's behind him, yeah. he has that gap for the huge gash. So he's got to get outside. He's trying to split back the difference, in. yeah. Now, he does do a good job of meeting him just as he crosses the hole. The problem is, is he's meeting him at an angle, which and Cook is a strong runner. If you're meeting Cook at an angle, most of the time Cook's gonna carry you carry you forward. Yeah. Just a he's just a savage, Ant. He's just a savage. And they're just gonna stick with the run game because why not? Getting a push, you're picking up three or four at a time. And when you're picking up three or four at a time like this, it's just good news for your offense. Oh yeah. And now you're scoring touchdowns. Yeah, it was a nice clean pocket. He got rid of the ball timely fashion to the guy who got, you know, to the goal line like he's supposed to. Um, he just sits down in the middle of the zone. Well done. It is good timing route. Not a lot of opportunities there for the the Chargers O to recognize what's going on. And uh, let's get one. We'll we'll try and get one more drive here. Uh, one more drive for the Chargers and and see if uh, see how the Chargers adapt. Uh, offensively, and see if there's any weaknesses here with the with the, with now the you Vikings got five defense. guys to the line of scrimmage. There you go, Ant. So it looks like whenever and a safety creeping and a safety creeping. So you're 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 committing eight into the box right now. So it looks like if you're not in those nickel sets, three wide receiver sets, that they will go five down. So something to keep in mind if you're Kyle Shanahan, and they got a toss action. It looks like, and of course, game pass is awesome. So just give me one second here. Uh, cut back crew and YouTube, and we'll get this uh, back up and running because uh, Game Pass sometimes is not always the great. Uh, but something that we've seen a lot from the 49ers, uh, little toss action plays. The only difference is there's no window dressing. Yeah, there's also no block. 
<laughs> oh man, you mean to tell me, Ant, that the Chargers, despite how well they have started off the season, have some holes offensively as a team? Yeah, they didn't execute as well as you would like on the edge. They didn't set the edge. That safety's coming up. Corners got outside contained. The safety flashes. Um, that allows the people to come down the line and be able to finish it off. The fact that they got two or three yards on that is actually impressive. Because there wasn't a lot. No, there's nothing. Now you're no, they show double A, they bail somebody, and then blitz the slot guy. And Herbert felt it right away. He's getting it out to his outlet. Oof. Not a great tackle in space. Allowed him to get to the first down marker. I believe that was Mike Williams out there in space. So, big Pretty body. Yeah, big body wide receiver, right? Pretty talented. Squeezing it down on the read option. Herbert kept it. Trey Lance package confirmed this week, Ant? Jimmy Garoppolo pulling for a first down confirmed this week. <laughs> it's the right read, too. 66 squeezes this down just a little bit too much. Is that is that 66 or is that um, 55? It might be 55. That might be bar. I think you might be right. I was just thinking. It does look like 66. It looks though. like 66. Maybe it is 66. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, but one, just, one of those long, gangly guys made a mistake. It's true. Uh, long, gangly, big arms. It is 66. Definitely 66. Let's try and figure out who that is. Uh, if you're in the comment section down below and you're a Minnesota Vikings fan, go ahead and correct us on our lack of Minnesota Vikings knowledge other than a handful of players. Okay, so they show that read option look again. They get everyone sucked up in space. Yeah, it's nice. Beautiful. I mean, I definitely see avenues where the 49ers could use uh, Trey Lance in certain packages if Kyle you know, feels that that is something that needs to be ran. But RPO is an, uh, definitely an opportunity this week for the 49ers. Yeah, especially with the run game going the way it is. RPO is always going to be. Yeah, just a little bit. Get everyone sucked down in space. Apparently that was a drop ant, so you get second and ten. Comes a blitz again, a nice twist. Finds the open receiver. Bailed out. Big time bail out. A little bit of an overthrow there. But, Smidge. Um, this is definitely something... To watch is the way they're able to handle downfield, and you got that. That's a, a slot receiver one on one. Might be a, a matchup the foreigners can take advantage of with Debo Samuel. Debo Samuel, because I believe I don't know if it's 24 or 27 Dantzler. Do you remember which one it is? I believe it's 27. 27. So I'm not sure exactly which one 20 who 24 is. Look what the name is on that. Um, but yeah, there, there's some definitely some questions. I know they got Patrick Peterson back this last week. But there are definitely some questions with who their other corners are in space, um, especially in the slot. They've dealt with a lot of injuries in their secondary. Yeah. Get the trips bunch low, or trips at the bottom, and you got running back out of the backfield one on one. They're just finding key matchups and going to them. They're, they're getting favorable matchups. They're getting a lot of one on ones, and they're just you know, getting the ball out to their playmakers in space. And then winning. Winning. Again, a little read option action. Some positive yards there. Pick yeah, up almost that's a nice game. Almost everything they needed. One play. I get second and shorter. So I give. Mm. And this is one you and I were talking about a little bit yeah. pre show um, on this one, where Eckler just misses a wide open gap here at the top of the screen. I mean, the only thing I can think is he thinks that linebacker is going to fill the, fill the up, you know, gap up there, but it's better to get up there and run vertical when you get up there. Correct. To try to get this first down, then to run straight into the offensive line. Agreed with you on that. And and shout out, I mean, credit credit to Minnesota. There's not a lot of give here. They don't give up a lot of ground on this run. Um, so their their front is definitely formidable. They're definitely playing very tough uh, and doing a lot of positive things. So it's going to be on the 49ers guys, Lincoln Tomlinson, Daniel Brunskill, Alex Mack. You you three there in the center. Um, when you guys got one on one opportunities, you need to try and win those more often than you lose them. But look how much the linebackers bit hard. I mean, there's opportunities for play action pass in that type of situation. You can't commit that many guys um, to the run game and be able to cover everyone in the pass game. Agreed with you on that. Go. Yep. First, first down. Get your first down, and now you're in really short situations, and uh, you know, got to play perfect. You got to play these perfect if you're Minnesota. And no play perfect. And Athletes make athlete plays, Ant. And when athletes make athlete plays, 
uh, you end up with some points sometimes, well, or at least bigger plays, bigger it's opportunities. It's like we've talked about before. Stopping someone for one yard is, is very difficult in this you, league. You have to be perfect. Um, You saw, though, Minnesota did some things to disrupt what the Chargers want to do early, and the Chargers got to go in that um, drive. But how they got it going was finding one-on-one matchups. Minnesota having to commit a little bit more to the run to stop it, and then going to, you know, go ahead and doing that. So Minnesota's defense is the question mark, I think, in this football game. I think the offense has an identity. They like to run the football with Dalvin Cook and then get a play-action you know, look with Kirk Cousins out of it. But I think theirs is more defined, but this defense is something that I'm looking forward to seeing how Kyle Shanahan manipulates. I think there's opportunities for him to do so, using Debo Samuel especially to move around. But all the window dressing and stuff is a, is a far cry from what the Chargers do. Um, They just don't do a lot. So it's going to be exciting, Alex. And then, you know, tomorrow's a game preview um, where you're going to be breaking down the film against the Packers. Will you be even a better idea because the Packers run a more similar offense as far as scheme to the 49ers? You mean to tell me that the All-22 film preview on Patreon of Packers and the Vikings is going to actually give everyone, including yourself, myself, and the Cutback crew and all our Patreon members, a better idea of how Minnesota may play the Niners? Maybe. I don't know. Is the floor, did the floor and Shanahan spend time together doing something? Maybe. I don't know. Uh, who, knows? <laughs> who knows? I guess if you want to find out, you can head on over, over to Patreon and, and check that out. If, if you feel like it. If you're already a Patreon member, then you're excited about this, and, and it is what it is. But look, Cutbacker, we hope you enjoyed this little All-22 sneak peek at the Minnesota Vikings and where really a lot of their success started, which was against the Chargers team. It's where they've started to get kind of on this roll the last few weeks with their O playing pretty well. Their defense doing enough to slow teams down. Have they figured something out or have teams just not executed? We'll get into some of that in the All-22 film preview of Packers and Vikings. Uh, but we hope you enjoyed the Friday Frenzy now and is officially complete. And we'll see you tomorrow morning for the game preview show. And until that time, stay safe. Remember the right way. Is always the 49ers way.